Let's put our hands together for the Lord as we take our seat. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. We want to thank God for this wonderful opportunity in his presence this morning. Amen. And without wasting much time, I want you to quickly turn your Bibles to the book of Act 27. Act 27. Praise God. I'll be reading from verse number 9. Act 27 from verse 9. Are we there? Now, when much time was spent, and when sitting was now dangerous, because the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the laden and sheep, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the sheep more than those things which were spoken. Praise God. Verse 12 says, And because the heaven was not commodious to winter in, the more path advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to finish and there to wither, which is an heaven of Crete, and lieth towards the south, west, and northwest. Verse 13. And when the south wind blew softly, the south wind blew softly. Supposing that they had obtained their purpose, losing tents, they sailed close by Crete. But not long after, there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eroclidon. And when the ship was caught, Praise God. The Bible says the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind. We let her drive. 16. And running under a certain island, which is called Claudia, we had much more to walk by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used help on the girding the ship, and fearing lest they should fall into quicksands, strike sail, and so were driven. And we've been exceedingly, take note of that, we've been exceedingly touched with a tempest. The next day, they lightened the ship. Hmm, trouble. Hallelujah. And the third day, we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the sheep. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, take note of that, there was neither sun nor stars in many days appear. Praise God. And no small tempest laid on us. All hope that we should be saved was taken away. All hope that it would be saved was taken away. Verse 21 says, But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, I should not have loosed. He says, Sirs, sorry, you should have hacked unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now, verse 22. I exalt you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the sheep. For there stood by me this night the angel 
of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God had given thee all them that sail with thee, he heard from God. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, I believe God, I believe God, that it shall even be, it shall be as it was told me. Praise God. How be it? We must be cast up a certain island. Let's stop there for some time. When we read through this account carefully, we discover a lot. And then the Bible says that there was a case wherein they were sailing. Paul was among them as a passenger or a prisoner. And yet he told the sailors that there's danger ahead. There's trouble ahead. There's something that is going to go wrong in the future. You must be careful. We must change our direction. We must go the other way. Let's do otherwise. But the Bible says that they do not listen or adhere to the instruction of Paul. Instead, they believe the ship owner and they decided to go their way. Praise God. And the Bible says it looks like a fear heaven. It was comfortable. Everything was okay for them. And then suddenly the weather changes. Everything changes. And then they realize that, wow, they are in serious trouble. Now, in the midst of that trouble, the Bible says they were there for many days. Neither sun nor moon appear. You can imagine what kind of condition it was for them. It was not only life and death. It was confusing. It was deadly dangerous. And they have no sense of direction. But then the Bible says, in the midst of that... Paul stood and said to them, you guys should have adhered to me, should have obeyed my instruction, follow my words, whatever I told you before. If that is the case, we will not have been thinking about danger or trouble or even worried about our lives by now. But because you rejected me, you refused me, look at the calamities that we've ended up into. Praise God. But then Paul said again, he says, there shall be no loss, be of good cheer. Why? He says, for the Lord, in other words, God himself was speaking to me. He said, there is an angel of the Lord, whose I am and who I am. When you hear a word like that, he says, the angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I am. In other words, he's not idolizing an angel. Is God in disguise. That is called theophany. When God manifests himself in a human form or in an angelic form, praise God. Whose I am and whom I am, praise God. He said he had spoken to me that there shall be no loss. Can we all say there shall be no loss, please? One more time. I'm going to be speaking to you this morning on the topic that I titled, Because God Said So. Because God said so. Hallelujah. Praise God. Many times in our lives we go through circumstances trials difficult moment or even in our personal relationship with god we tend to sort of like almost wanting to give up when things get so rough that we cannot handle but let me assure you beloved that the only assurance that we have as christians is the word of god praise god and if god had said that you are going to come out with flying colors be certain that you will come out with flying colors in Jesus' name. The greatest opportunity that we have as believers is the word of God. Praise God. The greatest treasure this last days, the anchor of our soul, that which will keep us going to the very end is the word that God had said. Praise God. It was Jesus who said in St. John 17, 14, he says, I have given them thy word. And the world hated them. In other words, Jesus was saying, because they have the word of God, the world hates us. Praise God. And what is the word? 
The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and this very word was what? Was God. So in other words, directly or indirectly, Jesus is saying, I have given them myself as God and as a result, the word hates them. If you have the word, you have God. In the book of um, 1 John 5, it says there are three that bear it record in heaven. It says the Father, the word, and the spirit. Praise God. And the Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void in Genesis. It says, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the earth. And God said, let there be, and there was. And God said, let there be, and there was. And God said, let there be, and there was. And God said, let there be. And since Genesis chapter 1, that God said, up till today, all the things that God said that came into existence, is still manifesting according to the word of God. Since Genesis chapter 1, all that God had said is still manifesting itself. They still glorify God. They still obey and honor. Naturally, physically, spiritually, they still abide according to God's word. Why? Because God had said so. Praise God. I want to assure you this morning that things will get better. Things will work for you. Things will be according to God's word and you will never fail. Why? Because God had said so. Praise God. Whatever it is that God had said will definitely be accomplished. Amen. Praise God. So when we looked at this account carefully, I want you to narrow your mind down a little bit. I know you are spiritually minded, you are so sensitive, and, and you have those divine antenna that could, you, know, you can pick up any revelation otherwise. Praise God. But please narrow your mind to the topic this morning, because God said so. Contextually, when we looked at this account, there are several treasures that you and I may, may, may tap into. But I don't I, I do not want us to look at it from a miraculous point of view. No. Don't look at this account from the, the, the faith point of view. No. Don't look at this account from a mysterious God intervention point of view. No. Don't look at this account from a divine point of view wherein a man of God can command the situation and things will work. No. Look at it from the word of God itself. Praise God. See what God said. Because let me say this to you. Whatever was going on in the midst of this particular account, when you looked at the scenario, the Bible says, in fact, all hope that they could be saved was lost. They had no hope. There was only one man in that boat or in that ship that knows one God who spoke one word and that word was in the realm of the spirit to be manifested. Praise God. So what we are looking at is because God said so. Amen. So at the end of which they were safe. At the end of which they survived. At the end of which they came out of this predicament. Because, not because Paul prayed. Because, not because they were able to navigate through the, the storm. It happens because God said so. Praise God. It happens because... Let there be light. Light came into existence because let the firmament bring forth their fruit. It happens because the Bible says that the day that Adam and Eve sinned against God, they died because Egypt drowned in the midst of the Red Sea because Lot's wife became a pillar of salt because the Bible says Jesus commanded Lazarus. He says, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus came forth because a man that was completely overwhelmed with leprosy. Jesus says, be thou clean. He was cleansed because the Bible says, Bartimaeus was blind. But Jesus says, go thy way. Thy faith had made thee whole. The man came and the Bible says he was celebrating, rejoicing. He received the sight because God said so. Praise God. I want to assure you this morning. I want to assure you this morning. 
that you ought not to be afraid because of what you are going through. Praise God. But keep your eyes on what God has said. Keep your eyes, keep your hope, your faith, your trust on what God has said. Praise God. The most important treasure that we have is the word of God. Hallelujah. Listen to this. When we talk about miracle, we talk about signs and wonders and all the fearful and mysterious things that God is capable of doing. It will only happen because God said so. If God never said it will happen, it won't happen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So because God said so, it is good to believe in the miraculous. It is good to receive the miraculous. But it is very, very important to live in the miraculous and to do the miraculous. And there is only one way that you and I can live in the miraculous and do the miraculous. Praise God. And it is why? Because God said so. Now take note. Many of us want to re receive miracle, but we don't want to live by miracle. We don't want to live a life of miracle. Many of us want to just receive. You come, the pastor pray that you receive, but you don't want to do miracles. So living in the miraculous and doing the miraculous might be a little bit challenging. And let me say this to you. God is interested in you doing that which he asked you to do. Amen. In other words, God wants you to do his will according to his word in his ways. I'll say it again. God wants you to do his will according to his word in his ways. Now take note very well. From Genesis to Revelation, you see when God calls a man or an individual, he trains him. Before he, he will assign you a ministry, or even after he had called you into a ministry, a divine ordinance, or he has his hand upon your life, he trained you first. I'll give you an example in the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, between God and Moses, the Bible says when God encountered Moses, the very first thing that he saw was a burning bush. Now, there's a real problem in the body of Christ today. Praise God. That's why I told you it is much more important to live in the miraculous and do the miraculous than to believe and receive the miraculous. Praise God. Now, many Christians are saying, God, do it in the name of Jesus. God, move in the name of Jesus. God, answer in the name of Jesus. But God is saying, you move. You do it. And he's saying, the answer is in your hands. And this is why we get confused. Because there are certain things that God will never do for you. No matter how anointed you are, you have to do it for yourself. And there are certain things that God himself will do and you will never do it. Now, when we talk about the training aspect, as I was saying, we saw God called Moses and Moses did not know God. He didn't understand the ways of God. And then when he saw the burning bush, he had an, in, um, 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 an interaction with God. And God revealed himself that he is the I am. Right? I am that I am. Praise God. Now, see what God did to him. God did a miraculous thing by setting the bush on fire. The bush wasn't burning, but the, there was fire there. It was the hand of God. It was the act of God, the move of God. Now, when God called Moses, God asked Moses, hey, put your hand into your bosom. He was sending him to Egypt, right? He put his hands into his bosom, and what happened? His hand became leprosy. He said, put your hand back into your bosom. He took it out. He was healed. Praise God. Now, in the training process, there are certain things that God will do. Take note now. Take note. Very important. God will do. All that you have to do is to watch him do what he's doing. That is how you learn. Praise God. The next level is that. That is the second level. God will bring you on board. Both you and God will do it together. And you see the result. And you will be smiling. And cheering up yourself and cheering up God and say, wow, this is wonderful. God says, that's level two. But the third level is that he's saying, do it yourself. And I will look at you. Praise God. That's the training process. So the first level, God will do it. So you watch him do it. The second level, God bring you on board. Both of you do it together. 
as a team. Then the third level, he says, do it all by yourself. And I'll take a look at you. Praise God. This is just the natural process, even in life. Academically, theoretically, physically, naturally, you learn through nature or nurture. Praise God. So Moses saw God performing miracle. He was amazed. He was shocked. And now God is saying, I want you to do the miracle with me. So both him and God, they did the miraculous together. His hand in his bosom, in and out, leprosy and miracle. That's the second level. Not only that, he threw the rod. It was his own rod, not God's rod. Threw the rod that belongs to um, 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 Moses. And then the Bible says he asked him to pick the rod again. The rod became a serpent. God said, go get it back. He says, ah, God, no, 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 no. A serpent. God says, go and grab it, not by the tail, by the head. That was a training process. Listen, he went and grabbed the thing by the head and the the serpent became what? A rod again. Praise God. Now, at the end, the Bible says, God said to Moses, now you go now to Pharaoh and speak my word to let my people go. Moses was confused, was baffled. Now, God, it was you doing it. And now, afterwards, me and you doing it. Now you are sending me to go do it by myself. He says, I have given you my word. My word is in your mouth. Go to Pharaoh, speak my word. Praise God. And then he went and he spoke the word of God. Despite the unbelief and the doubt of the Israelites, yet the word that God spoke, the word that God gave to Moses were fulfilled. Every single one of the word that he spoke. Praise God. Came into fulfillment. Now, in the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ, when we talk about training, when Jesus speaks to the unbelievers, he will say, only believe all things are possible. Only believe to the crowd, all things are possible. Unbelievers, sinners, only believe all things are possible. Because under that level of belief, the mercy of God can be established. Praise God. But while he was speaking to the disciples, he was saying, have faith. And if you have faith like a mustard seed, you will say to the mountain, be thou removed. <laughs> no, no, Father, leave us on that level of only belief. Jesus said, no, no. You are matured enough. You are in level two now. Now you have to have faith to speak the word that I have taught you. And you must see it come to pass. Praise God. And then at the end, he sent them out two by two. And they went out. And they came back. Rejoicing and celebrating with a lot of testimonies that demons were bowing in their name or in the name of Jesus. Miracle says the one that's happened, and Jesus said, Congratulations. Now you are what? You are matured enough. In fact, that was when Jesus Christ left them. He says, Now I can go away because you are capable enough. My question to you this morning is that what level are you at spiritually? Where are you at? Are you still in level one? You're saying, God, do it. God, do it. And God is saying, I cannot keep on going on this way. There is a level wherein you should have grown. Listen, training, discipline, and maturity takes time. It's a process. If you are in that level wherein God is doing everything for you, you don't want to be matured. You don't want to grow. It will get to a point wherein that you are never going to go above that level and God will abandon you. On that level. Until you get to the point where you are doing it together with God. That's the second level. And the third level where you are matured enough to handle the situation all by yourself. And God will applaud you. Heaven will applaud you. And let me say this to you. After Jesus Christ came, he finished the work. He says it is finished. And let me surprise you. Let me surprise you. There is no miracle that you are asking God for now that God will move from heaven to come do it. It has already been done. There's no answer that you are looking. So if you're looking for another Bible, if you're looking for Jesus to come again and die for you, trust me, you're going to die. That miracle will never happen. If you're looking for God to come perform signs and wonders, it, will, it has already been done. Jesus, at the end of the cross, he says what? It is what? It is finished. So what you have to do now is to have that um, authority that is on level three, wherein it says, you are capable of doing it. He says, for behold, I have given unto you what? Power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by enemies hurt you. He's giving everything to you. All powers in heaven and earth has been given unto me. 
Jesus said, and he says, I have given it unto you. Praise God. He says, whatever you shall bind, not Jesus shall bind, not Holy Ghost shall bind, whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be losing in heaven. So let me say this. Many of us are saying, God, bind the devil. God says, I can't. Many of us are saying, God, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray you come down and rain fire and rain fire. God says, no, the fire is in your mouth. You rain it. It will work. Many of us are saying, Lord, listen, your problem is you are using your mouth for the wrong purpose. You are using your mouth to gossip. You are using your mouth to curse. You are using your mouth to commit sin. You are using your mouth unnecessarily, unprofitably, of which you are supposed to be using your mouth to accomplish your destiny. The Bible says the power is nighty. And the people were wondering, where is the power? The Bible says, the, the apostle said to them, even at your mouth. Haven't you read that the scripture says life and death is in the power of your head, your nose, your eyes, or your, your heart? Life and death is where? In the power of your mouth. So whatever it takes for you to fulfill your destiny, you have it. Turn to your neighbor and say you have what it takes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God will cause it to happen because he had said so. But the problem is, you and I refuse to hold on to what God had said. Amen. So we see training in the Old Testament. We also see training in the New Testament through Jesus Christ and his disciples. Praise God. And I want to let you know, if you go back to the text, let's see something now. Verse 22 to 25. Act 27. Are we there? It says, and now I exalt you. This is Paul speaking now, not Jesus speaking. I exalt you to be what? Of good chairs, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but the sheep. Who is speaking? Paul is saying no one is going to die, but the sheep is going to be destroyed. That was what he was saying. Why did this man, why? He's not God, but ask the question. Why does he have the God? Or where does he have the liberty that audacity, where in the, in the midst of life and death situation, where did he get this from to come and say, oh, nobody is going to die. Are you God? No. He was saying so because God said so. He heard from God. Verse 21. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me. And not have lost from Crete. And to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exalt you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you. But the sheep. 23 says. And there you see the assurance where he got it from. He says there stood by me this night. The angel of God. Whose I am. And whom I serve. Saying God was speaking. So God said to him, there shall be no loss. So he will say also, there shall be no loss. Praise God. He said, fear not, Paul, for thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God had given thee all them that sail with thee. The angel said unto him, in other words, God said to him, Paul, you are going to appear before Caesar. And all those that are with you are going to be safe. So now he has that audacity, that boldness, the bravery to go out there and say, you know what? There shall be no loss. Don't worry. See something here. This man had confidence in what God had said. Amen. He has that assurance. Now take note of this. There are so many treasures in our Christian faith. There are so many opportunities. There is so much, so much available for us as believers. But... The battle that we have is that many of us don't use what we have. Or it may be that many of us are still ignorant. We do not know much about what we have. Or it might be that we know what we have, but we don't use what we have. Praise God. Hallelujah. The man heard from God. And because he heard from God, that was an assurance. Now listen to me. You can receive miracles, signs, and wonders through the mercies of God. If you can tap into the mercies of God, 
That's an opportunity. That's another treasure that you can use as a child of God. The mercies of God. You can operate in the Holy Ghost. You have the gift of the Holy Spirit. You can use that also to receive your miracle or to tap into the supernatural. Your mouth also can be the treasure. The Bible says you shall declare a thing and it shall be established. Whatever you say to this mountain, if you command it, it will happen. You can also succeed through covenant. By living a covenant life with God, you can make it. You can succeed through faith. You can accomplish what you want to through wisdom. You'll be able to fulfill God's will for your life through covenant, through holiness, through prayer, through praise and worship. All of these things are important treasures or opportunities or access that you and I have or we can tap into to let things happen for us in our lives. And so in this case, Paul says this is not about prayer today. It's not about grace today. It's not about what? Holiness today. It's not about covenant today. It's not about decreeing a thing today. It's not about wisdom today. It's not even about praise and worship. It's not about faith. It is about what God has said. And let me surprise you. The highest level of your faith ought to be centered on what God has said. If only you and I can focus on what God had said, trust me, every day will become a day of winning for you in Jesus' name. But you have a problem. We have a problem. I have a problem. And the problem is, sometimes we, we want to look at what is going around us. Whatever is going on around us, that is how we believe God. So we are acting by faith. And whatever is going on around us is affecting our faith. Cannot even give space to our faith to function. We become suffocated spiritually. And so when you begin to act by faith and it's not working, why? In the midst of your faith, there is still fear, there is still doubt and unbelief. So it doesn't work. Pay attention, I'm saying something deep. That's why I'm slowing down. Sometimes you say, well, you know what? I will pray, I will pray, I will pray. You go on your knees with a lot of stuff in your mind. You have been over, overwhelmed and you, you, you are restless, and you'll be praying, oh, oh. and before you say, in the name of you, you're sleeping. Okay. You didn't make it through prayer. You did not succeed through prayer. Because sometimes you're limited, even in praying. Or it may be that you said, well, I will command. The Bible says, whatever I bind shall be bound. Whatever I lose shall be in the name of Jesus. In the name. But as you are commanding and you are binding, you are still acting in fear. You are afraid. And then it doesn't work. And let me tell you what always works for you. Whatever it is that you are doing that doesn't work, change the dynamics. Go back to what God had said. Now listen to this very well. Whatever God had said, he had obligation to fulfill it. You understand me? So if God said it, it doesn't matter if you believe it or not, it will happen. Because he had said it. You get it now. I'm revealing certain secrets to you. Listen, the Bible says, I'll, at the end of the message, I will show you some scriptures. Take for instance, the Bible says the word of God will never fail. So listen, you can fail, but the word of God cannot fail. So when you are choked, your faith cannot function. You are prayerless. You do not feel the grace. I mean, you've lost sense of direction. There is no more wisdom in your situation. Or you cannot handle it anymore. Go back to what God had said. And say, God, you said this and that, and I believe what you said. Because listen to this. Whatever God had said, he has responsibility to fulfill what he had said. Whatever God had said, take note now, take note, very important. His integrity is tied to whatever he had said. Whatever he had said will never fail. You can say in the name of Jesus, mountain move, then the mountain will rise up and say, who are you? Because your level might not even be able to challenge the mountain. But if God says, mountain, move, you're going to say, a mountain. Even if you don't shout, move, you say, a mountain. Daddy said, move, come on, get out. The mountain will run. Why? Because God said so. Now, there are several things that God has said in the word of God. That, listen to this, beloved. You need to go back and say, God, this is what you have said. 
And you see the interesting thing is that, pay attention now, many of us, we spend time listening to Facebook, listening to YouTube, listen to this preacher, listen to that man of God, listen to that woman of God, which is not bad. Listen to your friend, listen to your neighbor, listen to the noise around, listen to your job, your boss, listen to what the doctor says, listen to all the financial status of the world, the economy, oh, listen to this. You never spend time to listen to God. You never. And so your mind is overwhelmed. You are, your, your thoughts are corroded. You are, you are sinking in the ocean of fear, you, you, your, your life is in, is in chaos. Why? Because you've been listening to the wrong voices and you've never had time to listen to God. Listen to the wrong people. You spend a lot of time listening to a man instead of listening to God. Paul, listen to this. He was the only one that was standing out and he became what? Outstanding. Why? Because he heard from God. Why all of them were afraid? The man was just confident. Why all of them were troubled? They were frustrated. Oh my God. Oh, oh, we're going to die. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Paul was saying, chill, man. Chill. It is well. Calm down. Calm down. If, in fact, you see, when you know the word, you'll be bluffing in the midst of the storm. While others are breaking their head, you are saying, it is well. It is well. With my soul. With my soul, it is well. It is well. Is, are, are you crazy? You say yes, I'm really crazy because I serve a crazy God who does crazy things in a crazy situation that makes people become crazy like myself. So I'm crazy. Praise God. Amen. So what is wrong with you? You say nothing. Nothing. I believe God and I doubt the storm. Why? I heard from you see this is why let me say this to you i'm not saying this out of pride and arrogance some of the things that trouble people doesn't trouble me the things that trouble people if you've known me you've seen me for you've been in this church for years and you've known me there are things that will break people that won't break me i'm not in level one anymore i'm not in level two i'm in level three that i know personally so there are sometimes even when i don't have a dime i still believe I believe God and I doubt the storm. Praise God. Hallelujah. It is the best way to survive. It is the easiest way to fulfill the plan and purpose of God for your life. Because you are man and he is God. You are limited and he is unlimited. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is an infinite God. You are just a finite being. When God speaks, his word is final. When God speaks, it is sure, certain. That is why Adam died. He said the day you touch on that tree, you eat of it, you will surely die. Satan come and do all kind of masquerade. They disobeyed God, but they die. Because God said so. The word of God is full of clarity. God will not speak to you in Mandarin if it is only English that you understand. No. It comes with clarity. The word of God brings assurance even though you may be ignorant of certain things or you are not spiritually minded or whatever. If God speaks to you, there is going to be that divine assurance. Paul was bold in the midst of death. He's saying there shall be no loss. I believe in our own Western culture now. Let's Think about it in the Canadian way. They said, are you stupid? What is wrong with you? Look at all the system is showing that we are going to drown. Look, look, look at the navigating system. In fact, it, it, it's, it's just about a few more minutes we'll, we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be buried down this, this, this ocean. And I, I can imagine Paul was saying to them, <laughs> no, not me, not even you, because God told me that we're not going to die. What bothers me the most, especially for those of you who are in school, who are in school right now, is that there's no institution, no secular institution that have what it takes to teach you that God is faithful. They don't do that in school. Am I right? In your secular institution, they don't teach you that. They never spend time that the integrity of God has never failed a man. But in fact, they will tell you science says there's no God. They will tell you this is the theory. In fact, one and one is two. And there's nothing else you can do. 
And then four and four, they'll give you an answer. Six, and they tell you that is how it works. But they will never tell you the theory of God. The theory of God is he is faithful. That's it. And that no matter what the doctors have said, no matter what science is said, no matter what the system that you are, you are living within is saying, God is still faithful. God is faithful. That's why I never blame him for nothing. Praise God. I'm not troubled. Why? Because I believe. Ask your neighbor. Say, do you believe? Do you believe? You don't believe. That's why you don't believe. Ask your neighbor if they believe. Praise God. The word of God will come forth with confirmation. It brings peace. The word of God is never going to be in confusion. When God speaks to you, you will have clear understanding. And let me say to you, beloved, when you get caught up in any situation in life, the very first thing you need to do, don't pick up your phone to call no one. Don't go online and try to look at the theory. It won't work for you. What you need to do is to say, Lord, what are you saying concerning this situation? Many Christians don't do that anymore. Because anything you can go on Google and find it online. So let me see how, how this works. Wait, 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 wait. I'll find the answer. Wait, 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 wait. You're looking. Or you're typing it in, and by the time you know, you have all kinds of directives, and God is saying, I'll wait for you when you're done. <laughs> when you apply your theory, it doesn't work, and you come back and say, oh, God failed me. No, you failed yourself. You failed yourself. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with some part of your heart, few aspects of your life. No, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding, but the Bible says, in all your ways, acknowledge him that he will what? Direct, navigate, teach, show, lead, help, bless, protect the path of your life. Praise God. But many of us are seeking counseling and advice from the wrong people. Listen, Paul was with the wrong crowd. Take note of this now. He was with the wrong crowd. People of unbelief. Because he told them before, when the Lord, listen, it was after now that he, after the trouble showed up, that was when he explained to them why they should believe him. So you should have adhered to me. You should have listened a long time ago. I told you, let's go this way. You said you're going that way. They were doing it scientifically. They were doing it theoretically. They were doing it logically. They were doing it philosophically. They were doing it in, a, in, a, in, in, in their own way, naturally. So they, they ignored the spiritual. And at the end of which, they run into trouble. Can I ask you a question? Who are the people that surround you? Are you with the wrong crowd? Are you with those that will speak unbelief? You say, I believe God for this situation. Even in church, even among Christians, there are what we call unbelieving believers. So they are believers, they are Christians, but every single thing that they do is a manifestation of unbelief and fear and doubt. The pastor says, oh, this is what we're going to do. And then the other sister says, no, he doesn't mean that. He doesn't mean, don't worry, just take it easy. Cool down, it's not going to work. No, 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 God is not like that. You know, cool down, bro. You take everything, you're too spiritual. Everything, prayer, prayer, everything God says, God says, yes. Be serious about it. If God said it, listen, if God said you will die, you will die, oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, no joke. No joke. Except otherwise he changed his mind. Like what happened to Ezekiel? If God say you will leave, you will definitely leave. Nobody will kill you. Even if they go to the U.S. military and get the best explosive to kill you, you will be in there. When, when everything is exploded, you become the more brilliant, glorious, and wonderful. And they will look at you and say, oh my goodness. We thought you would die. Why? Because God said you will leave. You see, that is why at the end of every service we say, I shall not die. I shall live to declare the glory of our God in the land of the living. God said so. God said so. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
You don't joke with the word of God. So who are your friends? Who are the people that surround you? If you are going, listen, show me your friends and I will show you who you are. They said birds or birds of the same feather, they what? They flock together. If your, your colleagues are always unbelievers, I've heard people say, oh, my best friend are unbelievers. Shame on you. It's a shame. It's a disgrace for a child of God to say, my best friends are unbelievers. Your best friends ought to be Christians. People that will edify God. People that will glorify God. People that will give you godly advice. There are what we call, what we call um, um, fire extinguishers within the church. You want to act by faith. You want to believe God and then a brother will come and say, no, 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 no. Come on. You're behaving as if you're the only one that believes God. Afterwards, we also believe God too. So don't do like that. Take it easy. You know what they're trying to do? They're trying to extinguish your faith. They quench you easy by easy. Gradually. Little by little. Easy by easy. And by the time you know, you begin to, you begin to behave the way they behave, talk the way they talk, live the way they live, dress the way they dress. And you begin to wonder, I was not like this before. You lost it a long time ago. Why? Because they, they spread your faith to death. And before you know, the person that used to say, in the name of Jesus, you will get up at 3 a.m., 5 a.m., and believe God for the next morning. They say, oh, bro, you're causing noise. Faith is not like this. doesn't mean that you should be shouting and praying and disturbing us. Oh, every day you pray. Every day you pray. Have you killed somebody? Why are you guilty? Pray, 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 pray. Come on, don't waste my time. Come on, God is not like this. If I just pray by faith and believe, it's a lie. You know what they are trying to do? <laughs> Extinguish. So you too holy for our comfort. In fact, you make us feel uncomfortable. This is your holiness, holiness. You put it all over your head. Are you the only Christian? He says yes. I'm the only one. <laughs> Amen. You are too holy. Holy, 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 holy. Everything you are so holy, holy, you are too God conscious. In fact, you are religious. Ah! No, bro, take it easy, sis. It's not like that. This Christian life is, you know, enjoy yourself. Uh, uh, uh. You know what they're trying to do? They're trying to water down your consecration. And if you don't care for, before you know it, now when you come to the word, the word of God or you come to the church, the pastor is preaching, he's saying... Mm. Maybe he's just saying it to impress us. In fact, I've been there, done that. No, you've never been there. You were never there. You were trying to get there, but because somebody quenched you, fire extinguisher, and now you are assuming that you were already there. Say, so I have prayed the kind of prayer. No, you've never prayed the kind of prayers. Oh, I have fasted the way. No, you've never. Because if you have been there, trust me, you will still be there. Hallelujah. I want to assure you that in the midst of your situation, when God speaks, it is settled. You have no reason to break your head anymore. And let me tell you one strange thing that normally happens from Genesis to Revelation. Before God goes into operation, he speaks first so that you know what he's going to do. God said to the children of Israel, the land is there and then he's going to drive the enemies before they, before they get there. God was already there before them. He said to Moses, he said, stretch the rod. He said, the Egyptian that you see today, you see them no more forever. Why? Because God said so. You will see them no more forever. It's up to you now. Moses said, ah, of course, you grumble, you complain, you shout, you do all kinds of nonsense or spiritual gymnastics that you want to do. What I know is that God said we are crossing this Jordan or we are crossing this Red Sea. And they were like, are you crazy, Moses? Why would you stop your nonsense in Egypt? Why are you bringing all this nonsense, this, your spiritual garbage among us, and we are dying? And Moses just stretched the rod because God said so. He heard from God. He stretched the rod, and they were like, oh my God. Ah, ah, ah. They were the ones that were accusing and planning to curse and stone Moses. Now they saw what God did in, the, in, in, in front of their eyes, and they were shocked. Why? Because God said so. And now Mo Moses said, come on, get in. They were like, oh my God, oh my God. Then Moses, okay, you left, stay behind. I'm going, bye, bye. That was when they were bold enough to join him. And they walked through the Red Sea. When the last man lifted up his leg from the seabed, the Bible says, God said to Moses, stretch the rod again. <laughs> Before you know. The, listen to this. The things that never happened in the history of mankind 
will happen in your life because God said so. Just believe. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not preaching and shouting around as usual, you know, but I'm trying to go deep and dig deep so that you can digest what I'm saying. So when you leave this house, everywhere you go, when God speaks to you, trust me, you'll be dancing. What shall I say unto the Lord? All I have to say, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. They say, this guy is drunk. Yes, I'm drunk. You are drunk because you heard from God that you are singing, thank you, Lord, because you know when the doctor says you will die, God says you are healed. When the lawyer says, no, you lost this case, suddenly they call you back, oh, we mis make a mistake, we review your documents, you're good. When the landlord says, we'll kick you out, suddenly God provided, and somebody came and said, here's the key, brand new house. When the doctor said you will never give back to a child anymore, and then suddenly, you begin to throw up in the room, bra, and honey say, hey darling, what's going on? He say, I don't know, let's go to the hospital. Maybe stomach pain, I think I catch the flu. Yes, indeed, you catch the flu. <laughs> oh, you catch a better flu. The best flu. Because God said so. <laughs> and when you go and check, the doctor said, indeed, the flu is there. The good one. That will end up, and be, nah, 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 nah. that's the good flu. Because God said so. Stop being afraid. Stop being troubled. Listen to this. The devil, listen, if you hear from God, the devil will not fight anymore. You know why you are fighting with the devil? Because you are making bold face. I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe. I can do it. I have what it takes. Yes, you did. You, you can. But listen, devil can never fight what God has said. Because you know why? Satan himself knows very well that anything that God said is final. So whenever he hears from God, he says, okay, my own is finished. I have no business in this. He already spoke. That is what normally happens. The Bible says that Satan and demons, they fear God. They tremble. They are not afraid of you. Who told you that Satan is afraid of you? He's older than you. Older than your great, 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 great your greatest forefathers. Satan was there with God and though you want Satan to fear you. No, 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 no. You are embarrassing yourself. You say, Satan, you'll be afraid of me. You don't know Satan. You don't know him. Praise God. If you know the Satan that is real Satan, you will not say what you are saying because you know. <laughs> Trust me. The Bible says, had it not been for God, you and I would have been extinct upon the face of the earth by this Satan. Because what God gave to him is so powerful that even in heaven, he was the best of the best, the most powerful. But what makes it and bow is when God speaks into your situation. When God speaks into that problem, as soon as God said that, it is over. Satan said, oh, but no way. God, why did you do this? Then he said, everybody get out. He had spoken. Because he knows that whatever God had said is settled. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is what? He knows that there is no fight about this now. Battle is over. So, the secret of your life, whenever something goes wrong, go and hear from God first. God, what is the secret? I love my overseer. Pastor Francis Mambu. I love my overseer. You know why? At an early stage in my ministry or in life, he taught us to hear from God. Go and hear from God. Go and hear from God. Go and hear from God. Sometimes he will force us to go on a retreat, to go fast and pray. And afterwards, he will, when we're done, he said, what did God say? Tell me. <laughs> what did God? And you know, in our Christian life today, in our world today, the Christianity today, one of the, 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 the most difficult thing that you will ask a Christian is to tell me what God said to you. Did you hear from God? He said, no, pastor. Uh, I, I don't know. He didn't say anything. That's why you're confused. That's why you're still discouraged. That's why you're still stressed. That's why the devil still beats on you because you haven't heard from God. And even sometimes to some people, when God speaks to them, they don't know whether it, it is of God or not. They cannot, they cannot, they cannot um, uh, differentiate the voice of God from that of the devil or their mind. They do not understand the voice of God. Jesus says, my sheep knows my voice. They hear me and they, what? they follow me. Who do you follow? Well, you know, Pastor, you know, this thing, my friend said, my friend, my friend. Oh, okay, good. 
your friend becomes the idol in your life. The devil cannot fight you if God had spoken because he knows that that's the end. The word of God is God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So whenever God speaks, it is a seal of authority that is said to Satan, say, this is God. I have no business in this. Praise God. We must learn to listen to God. And so because Men of God who once served God, they hear from God. They were bold enough. They have that assurance and that confidence to face the battle. A king that was full of himself. The man was so arrogant. Nebuchadnezzar. He was saying, I did this, I did that in Babylon. And God heard him. God said, you what? He said, because of your pride and your arrogance, I'll teach you a lesson. It has never happened in the history of mankind. The Bible says God turned the man king if I'm not the man, let me sound it again. God turned the king into an animal. Hey! Imagine now, the man that was on the throne now was on the ground. He took him from the throne to the ground. And the man was eating like goat and dog. And he sent him into the forest. Jehovah sent a king to the forest. He said, this is your punishment for your arrogance. The man was eating. Ah, my God. No, 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 God. When we get to heaven, there is so much question that we're going to ask. A king was eating like animal in the forest. Seven years. God said, this is what you get for pride and arrogance. You want to be me? I'll teach you a lesson. And let me tell you, nobody respects God like Satan. You may say, but he disobeyed. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Nobody respects and fear God like Satan. You know why I'm saying this? That is why he has not repented up till now. And he will never repent. You know why he will never repent? Because God says that he will end up in hell. And Satan believed that 100% that there's no way he's going to end up in hell. So he says, well, I'm finished. So I can just do whatever I, I can do now. And until now, he, he fears God. Read the book of Job. Read so much scripture in the Bible, you will discover. That is why Satan doesn't fear you, but for God, he fears him. After God kicked him from heaven, read your scripture very well. There's not a case wherein he faced God to accuse or to... No, 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 no. Now he faces you and I. It is us. We're cha he's challenging us, fighting. The... He doesn't fight with God. Mm -mm -mm. In fact, it was not God that drove him up from heaven. Let me surprise you. Read your Bible very well. He, he was the most powerful angel in heaven. But you know what God did? God empowered the other angels, Michael and Gabriel and the others. They kicked them all. They don't just kick Satan out. They kick him and the others. God was saying... <laughs> Like that. He has no, no reason to go and go. He, 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 are you going or not? I'll punch. Ah, forget that nonsense. No. God was on his throne. He crossed his leg like this. Mike, Gabriel. Ah. <laughs> and the, whole, the battle was over. God fight with who? Satan. Are you crazy? Never. It will never happen. So, now, Satan believed, in fact, he believed God from the beginning. And after he made his mess, his mistake, he still believed God. The Bible says he trembled. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus, in his earthly ministry, he did a lot of miraculous things. Great mysteries, signs and wonders. But then in the New Testament, the Bible says, we shall be the head. And not the tail. But that we're still, in under, we're still underneath in certain aspects. We're still failing. And we're still struggling. We're still broke. We're still sick. And we're Christians. And we're still begging for, for our living. And we're saying we, we, we're born again. And God is in us. No, you're missing the mark. The point is you fail to hold that which God had said. I love uh, uh, Jacob. Jacob had one opportunity in his life. Ooh, he maximized every single bit of it. One day God appeared to him. And Jacob said, <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. He was coming like he was worshiping God. And he came close. He grabbed God. He said, you go nowhere. <laughs> he said, God, today, don't you know that I was a cook? I'm a thief. I'm a liar. I'm a deceiver. And I've been waiting for this time, for this opportunity. Can you imagine? God says, Jacob, the morning breaks, so I've been here for too long. <laughs> Jacob says, hey, God, 
In fact, when you read the Bible, the Bible says that Jacob, he was, he was victorious. He won with God and with man. When I read that, the Bible says he prevailed with God and with man. In other words, when him and God, they face to face, he wins. And because he wins in the presence of God, he is able to win through his entire life with any man. No one could chase him. No one could face him. Why? Because he had already won a battle with God. Certain scripture, when you hold it, you go back and say, God, listen to this. If you go and open your Bible and read what God had said in the face of God and say, God, this is what you said. I'm living the life. I'm doing your will. But this is what you said. I believe it and it must happen. If it doesn't happen, come back to me. And when I'm standing in the pulpit and shout loud, say, you're a liar. Pastor, you and your God, you fail. You're deceiving. And I will accept. I will accept if it happens. But I know it will never happen. Why? Because whatever God had said, it has been uh, fulfilling. From the beginning up to now, it has been fulfilling up to now. In fact, according to the word of God, the Bible says that Isaiah, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm Isaiah, he spoke of the word of God that is unfailing and unchanging. From Genesis to Revelation, he spoke that God had never, had never diluted himself or his standard or status. Take for instance, Abraham, God said to him, you will bring forth a child. He manipulated the system. God says, whatever you do is your own. My own is coming. He said, my own. In fact, Sarah, whatever you guys are doing, fine. I'll do my own. Then you will know that I will not fail. In Genesis 18, the Bible says, and it was so according to that which the Lord had said, Isaac was born. Joseph became a fulfillment according to the word of the Lord that he had in a dream. Hallelujah. The flood came according to the instruction of the Lord to Noah. Israel entered the promised land according to the instruction of the Lord. This is our all fulfillment, not just promises. The young prophet died. He was eaten by lion when he disobeyed according to the word of the Lord. David recovered all after the men came in. You know that Ziklag issue. And they took all the house, uh, uh, took all the household, the wife and everything, their belongings, they recovered all. Hallelujah. God fed Israel according to Psalm 78 verse 72. According to his word. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible says that you and I will be delivered from death. Those who have been assigned for death according to the book of Psalm 79 verse 11. It says, you and I will be delivered from death. So whoever had marked you, say you will die. Go and read Psalm 79 verse 11. Say, I shall not die. God will deliver me. Hallelujah. He will preserve me from death. The Bible says in Isaiah 63 verse 7. That we are loved and cared for according to the loving kindness of God. In Acts 13.23. The Savior was sent to save you and I according to the word of God. Grace is given according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 10. According to the word of God. Hallelujah. Our faith is also measured. Measured according to the word of God. You and I are established according to Romans chapter 16 25. According to the word of God. And let's see the book of 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 56. Please give me a few more minutes. First Kings chapter 8 verse 56. So hearing from God is the key for excellence in our lives. You're not hearing from any man. Say, I've heard God and that's enough. You're listening to so many people. First Kings, are we there? Chapter 8 verse 56. I want everyone to read together. Are we ready? After to go. Blessed be the Lord that had given, God had given what? Rest unto who? His people. Israel. How did this happen? It happened. They have the rest according 
to all that he promised. Whatever God said, it happened for them. He said they had not failed what? One word. One word. One word of all his what? His good promise. My God. My God. Which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. One word. Don't. 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 You, you, you say, oh, well, you know what? I, I think God failed me in this area. It's a lie. I will forever be saying this. If anything goes wrong, it is not God's fault. It must be my fault somehow. If you have that kind of a mindset, you will always be faithful and going into the presence of God with a heart of gratitude. Oh, you know, I prayed God did not answer me. Oh, you know what? He, he delayed. No, no, no. Shut up. You don't know the problem is yours. But the problem is you always want to point your finger and play a blame game against God. No. Something is wrong somewhere that you might not even know. Or you know you are not fixing, but you still want to blame God. God is a perfect God. He will never fail. Amen? He will never deceive you. He will never lie to you. He said, there failed not a single one word of all that God had promised. When we looked at the text, even though they were complaining, they were against Paul as a prisoner, they wanted to do their own thing or say whatever they want to say, the Bible says that Paul said, I believe as it was told me. What do we discover? That the man was steadfast, number one. Are we steadfast? You take the word of God today, tomorrow you are jumping. Today you are in this church, tomorrow you are in that church, the other day you are in that church, the other day you are... You say, oh, I believe today, tomorrow is, um, you are in the pawn, out of the pawn. You must be steadfast, focus. Praise God. Have a disciplined attitude. Amen. So, Paul was steadfast. Paul was disciplined. Many of us were not disciplined. You're not steadfast in your prayer life, not steadfast in your, in, in your Bible study. So, in fact, if you don't read your word, the word, how do you know? How, how would you even know what God has said? Not steadfast in church services, and you are not disciplined. Morally, you are not disciplined. Personally, you are not disciplined. God, you woke up the morning, the Lord said, you must fast today. He had already seen something that is going to happen. <laughs> or John. You're eating everything. Belewapi. Everything goes down. Hungry lion. God said fast. He said God. And then when the trouble showed up, he said, but God, God, God. And that's the time you want to speak in tongues. The, the, the Lord will say, mm, you messed it up. I gave you an instruction. You heard from me. Praise God. He was disciplined. He was focused. When you read the account, he was the only one standing for God. Why? Because he was the only one that heard the word. He was focused. Are we focused? In the pond today, tomorrow, out of the pond. Are we focused in our worship? Are we focused with our service? Many of us are so talented. You have gifts, you have potentials, but you've never made use of it for the kingdom of God. Many of us are full of pride, arrogance, evil thoughts. The man was focused. He was disciplined. He was steadfast, unwavering. He was courageous. He had strong courage. You don't just easily push him down. He was uncompromising. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. He was all alone, yet he chose to believe what God has said. How many of us will be saying, Lord, I believe you and I doubt this time? Hallelujah. There are those that we call negative advertisers. They themselves are negative and so they are advertising Everything that is, hey, bro, this is never going to work. This is never going to work. Uh, 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 uh. Why are you coming with your own kind of faith? You think that your faith is a rocket science kind of faith, and then and, and, uh, we've already prayed and it doesn't happen. Uh, who do you think you are? Unbelief. Praise God. Pray that God will open our eyes. Amen. Hallelujah. We should stand on the word. We must speak very great attention to what God had said. I want to round up on this last major issue and then we're going to look at the verses and we'll pray. Amen? I'm going to skip some stuff. If you believe God, take note of this, and you despise his word, it's also a sign of unbelief. 
then truly you do not believe him. Because there's no way you can separate God from his word. According to what we've read. The beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. You see, I believe God, I believe God. But what I saw in the Bible, I don't believe. Me, pastor, hmm, until I see. No wonder you're going down. You are the seeing kind of a Christian, not the believing one. You're like that man, the cup bearer in the, in the days of Elijah. I say, ah, Elijah says, by tomorrow at this time, you will have surplus. Great and mighty things. So I say, <laughs> if God will open the windows of heaven and he's sending down the blessing, pa, 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 it will never happen by tomorrow. The man of God says, congratulations. But the thing I have for you is that you will see, but you will not taste. Things started to happen, and then they had the voice and um, the voices of the people, the crowd celebrating, jubilating. Miracles had happened. I mean, the lepers came and told them the story. While he was in the crowd, running to go see the miracle, he saw the miracle. While he was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, somebody just tripped him. He fell, and they trampled him to death. He saw the miracle, but he didn't taste it. He didn't eat of it. Unbelief. We must pay great attention to whatever God is saying or whatever God has said or whatever God will say. I'll say it again. We must pay greater attention, very, very important, great attention to whatever God had said, whatever God is saying, and whatever God will say. First Peter chapter 1. 25. We're just going to read these verses. We're just going to read them and then we'll pray. First Peter, are we there? Chapter 1. Another person turned to Isaiah 55, 11. First Peter, chapter 1. Are we there? Verse 25. What does this say? Mm -hmm. The word of the Lord stays, abides, endured, lives forever. And this is the word which by the gospel we preached unto you. So the Bible is the word. Believe the word and you believe God. Believe in God, you believe in the word. And it works. Amen. Isaiah 55, 11. Another person go to Psalm 119, verse 89. 119, 89. Isaiah 55, 11. Are you there? So shall my word be. The word that will come out of my mouth, Yes. It shall never, ah, my goodness, cobra label, sierra. My word will never go out and come back to me. How? Empty. God forbid. In other words, God is saying, whatever I have sent my word to do, it will happen before it comes. The word is an obedient servant of God. If not, the word has no right to return back to God. I'm empty. You say I should heal that woman and then it doesn't work. No, 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 no. It shall be done. It shall prosper in the thing. Listen. So, where to I said? So, in other words, if you are doing business, right? You want to start a project or you want to do an investment, use the word of God that you know for that business. Say, Lord, you have said that you will bless the labor of my hand. Whatever I put my hand to do, it shall what? It shall prosper. You know that scripture. I say, Lord, <laughs> this is what you said. Hey, business, so take, do it. It's yours. And see if you will not prosper with the labor of your hand. What God has said. It will definitely. You see, man, I remember a story. But I will tell you the story at the end of this other verse. Psalm 119, verse 89. 119, verse 89. Yes, last verse. Psalm 11. Forever and ever and ever and ever. For everlasting to everlasting. God's word is what? It is settled in heaven. It is settled here on earth. It is settled in your life. It is settled in every situation. It is settled in every need. It is settled in every problem. It is settled in every marriage. It is settled in every business. It is settled in every career, in every health. The Bible says forever and ever. God's word is settled. So who will say it won't work? Devil, listen, if devil cannot touch God's word, as I said, because the word is God, then who should touch it? Go and bluff. Forever. Hey! 
Hey, oh Lord, ah, thy word is set to, it never need is set to. Oh, forever. Are you crazy? Yes. Oh Lord. Ha! Thy word is set. They say your husband will die. Oh, forever, forever. He will live. Oh Lord. Thy word, thy word is set to. Is, ah, your husband will die. Shut up. Oh, forever. Oh, oh Lord. My God. Thy word is. My husband will live. My husband will live. And then suddenly the man that they said is in Kuma came back to life. <coughs> <laughs> Honey, what happened to me? See a miracle. And you'll be like, how come? What happened to you? Say, I don't know. I just came back to myself. Why? Because forever thy word is settled. A woman received a miracle from the servant of God, Elijah, and one day the child died. And then she grabbed the son. Ah! I love women, though. The faith that women have, men don't have. So this woman grabbed this young man with a lapa, a rapper, grabbed the baby into the city. He was looking for the man of God. Where is the man of God? Where is the man of God that gave me this child? Where is the man of God? He will not lie to me. Where is he? People were saying to the woman, ah, ah, don't distress her. Hold your peace. She was going, this one wants to talk. Did I ask you? Hold your peace. Where is he? She goes over there. Where is the man of God? Uh -uh. But the, your baby, not your business. What does it concern you? Hold your peace. She kept looking and looking, and she met with the man of God. Say, man of God, here's the miracle. The miracle is now dead, but I believe. <laughs> Elijah just stretched on the bed, put the child. One, two, three. By the time he goes seven times, the child. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What happened? Where's my mommy? Back to life. Whatever that has died in your life, or whatever they call dead, will receive life today in the name of Jesus. It will receive life today in the name of Jesus. Stand to your feet right now. We're going to pray. Stand to your feet. The Bible says, that Paul says, there shall be no loss. You will not die. You will not die. The doctor said it's cancer. It's a lie. God said you are healed. Oh, the doctor said, oh, oh, you have a problem with your blood. Or maybe it's HIV. It's a lie. You are healed. Oh, you will never have a child. It's a lie. Because God did not say that. What did God say? God says that by his stripes, you were healed. And you are bound to heal. Amen. That is what God says. Amen. Lift up your voices and begin to pray right now. Concerning your marriage. Concerning your destiny. Concerning your career. It shall be done. Because God said so. Whatever you have said, oh God Almighty. Because God said so. Into my life. Because God said so. my purpose, oh God Almighty. It is your winning ticket for life. to pass in the name of Jesus, oh God. I should not die. I should live, oh God. Because God said so. It shall be for you. Because God said so. Whatever you have declared and decreed upon our life, oh God. It shall stand. Your plans shall stand. Your will shall stand, oh God. Your will shall stand, oh God. Your promises shall manifest in our life and in the name of Jesus, oh God. And I will show you the great and mighty things oh God. that you've never you have spoken now. upon our Lord, life. Whatever you have spoken God. upon this ministry, oh God. You. I'm God, it shall stand and it shall come to pass in the you. name of Jesus, oh God. I'm holding on. God, we hold on to your word. We believe your word, oh God. I will not give up. I will not surrender. I will not back down. You will cause everything to work together good. To those who are called according to your purpose, heaven of Father. You are God in the life of my children. You are able to do exceedingly above all that we can you think are or God do according to the wife. power you that works in us, O God. Lord, your mercy, the truth shall set us free, O God Almighty. We are free, O God. We are free. We are free yes, in the name yes, of yes, Jesus, yes. O God. Lift up your because Lord, your word said, yes. your truth, your word will set us free. The word will set us free, O God, in our minds, O God, in the name of Jesus. Whatever word that has spoken against our life, Heavenly Father, whatever you have said, O God, since the foundation, O God, you said that we are blessed, Heavenly Father. You said that we shall be fruitful. You said that we shall multiply. You said that God will subdue and dominate, O God. God shall stand and shall come to pass in our life, in the name of Jesus. Lord, your words shall be the head, not the tail. I be the first, not the last, O God Almighty. God, you said we are overcomers. We are winners, O God. We are champions, O 
name of the Father. Our portion in the name of Jesus, name of the Father. God will refuse to take any more for us. God will refuse to have us this name of the Father. God, you said that we are your sons and daughters, name of the Father. We are children of you, O God, the old woman of love that the Father is giving us. The God Almighty. We are sons and wonders, name of the Father. We are sons and wonders, name of the Father. In the name of Jesus. I'll give you one way up point. In the name of Jesus. Just one. One. Satan cannot stand the word. Witches and wizards cannot stand the word. The powers of darkness ah, cannot stand the word. Now, listen to me. You are saying to every situation in your life, every whatever it is, life, receive God. the word. Receive the word by every fire. situation. By fire. Fire. Receive the word every situation. In my life. Every situation in my life, oh God. Every word in my life, oh God. Every word in my life, oh God. Receive the word, oh God. Every not achievement in my life, receive the word. Receive the word. Situation of hopelessness. Receive the word by fire. Receive the word by fire. The Lord will cause all things to work together good. He will cause all things to work together good. Receive the word by fire. The Lord will cause all things to work together good, O Lord. Whatever you have declared, whatever you have decreed, whatever you have proclaimed upon my life, O God Almighty, receive the word, O God. Let my mind and my heart receive the word by fire. Every altar that refused to speak against the word of God, receive it by fire. Receive it by fire against my future. Receive the word by fire. My destiny. Receive the word by fire. Receive it by fire. Receive it by fire. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, my Redeemer. Yes, Lord. Yes, you be God. You know, be man. You be God, you know, be man, oh, you be God, ah, you be God, oh, you be God, you know, be man, oh, you be God, you be God.
right now. Raise up your hand everywhere you are right now. Yes, Lord. Simple prayer this morning. Amen. Simple prayer, big miracle. Amen. Simple prayer, big miracle. Amen. I told you what prayer cannot do, the word of God will do. Amen. Amen. What faith cannot do, the word of God will do. Amen. Amen. Ah, yeah, yeah. What wisdom cannot do, the word of God will do. Amen. Hey, Amen. Amen. What courage cannot do, the word of God will do. Amen. Because Amen. God Amen. bears responsibility to his word. Amen. So we are saying to God this moment, Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ of Nazareth, Amen. you have said in your word Amen. that you will perfect that which concerns us, so Amen. God. Therefore, Lord, whatever it is Amen. that we are going through, Amen. whatever it is Amen. that we are believing you for, Amen. whatever it is Amen. that we are hoping for, Amen. perfect it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let them be perfected in the name of Amen. Jesus. Be perfected in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Let the word perfect your health. Amen. Let the word perfect your business. Amen. Let the word perfect your academic life. Amen. Let the word perfect your marriage. Amen. Let the word perfect your spiritual life. Amen. Let the word perfect your prayer life. Amen. Let the word perfect your Bible study life. Amen. Let the word perfect your consecration. Amen. Let the word perfect your righteousness. Amen. Let the word perfect your sight. Amen. Let the word perfect your hearing. Amen. Let the word perfect your brain. Amen. You bread two more. Get out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bread two more. Get out. In the name of Jesus, Amen. pray two more. Get out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every asthma, Amen. every anemia, Amen. every skin disease, Amen. disease in the blood, Amen. high blood pressure, Amen. every sickness in the heart, Amen. in the arteries, Amen. in the stomach, Amen. whatever you are, yes. be perfected today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I command uh, according to God's word, Amen. it shall be perfect in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Your life is perfect in the name of Jesus. Amen. The beauty of God, Amen. the excellence of God, Amen. the glory and the grace of God, Amen. the virtue of God Amen. shall perfect you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shall perfect your children Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Perfect your husband in the name of Jesus. Amen. Perfect your children in the name of Jesus. Amen. Perfect your wife in the name of Jesus. Amen. Perfect your family in the name of Jesus. Amen. It shall be well with you. Amen. You're going out and you're coming in. It shall be well with you. Amen. Whatever you do, it shall be perfect. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost shall perfect you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of God shall perfect you. Amen. The grace of God perfect you. Amen. The word of God perfect you. Amen. The will of God perfect you. Amen. Ah, keparota sela. Lift up your hands and thank the Lord right now. Begin to thank the Lord. Blessed be the name of our God. Jehovah that reigns forever and ever. He is God for everlasting to everlasting. Thank you to our life, O God. We thank you. We Give bless you, God. We believe that you have done it, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory, thank all you, the Father. credit. In take Jesus, my name we pray. Amen. Can we put those hands together for the Lord? Loud and clear, put those hands together for the Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. God richly bless you. We believe you have been blessed. You are welcome to join us at any of our fellowships on Wednesday at 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. for Bible study, Fridays at 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. for prayer session, and on Sundays at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can reach us at 647-707-3738 or at 647-345-8708 or send us an email at faithhealingca at yahoo.com or faithhealingca at gmail.com. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and connect with us on social media. Thank you and God bless.